This video is sponsored by Sal Digital. It was the year zero BE, before Emily, and my dad, an avid landscape photographer, was planning a trip of a lifetime to the Faroe Islands. He'd even gone so far as to order some pamphlets in the post from the tourist board. This was very much before the internet, when life happened. Surprise, I put a spanner in all of those works, and three decades later, it's not happened yet. But that's all changed now. We are here together on a nerdy photography holiday of a lifetime. You don't look crazy, is it? You look super cool. We're just about to start our adventure in the Faroe Islands and it's moody joy. I love it so much already. There's four categories of photograph in particular that I think both me and my dad should focus on. And they are, number one, the moody landscape. That's what I think about when I think about the Faroe Islands and I don't think we're gonna to struggle too much for that one. Disaster. <laughs> one bump too many. Number two wildlife. There are puffins here, there are sheep. So I'd love to get some lovely wildlife shots. All right, you're kind of following us now, guys. Number three, I think there's a lot of character here with the tiny villages. So I'd love to get some lifestyle character sort of shots of everyday life here. And then number four, definitely the most challenging, given that it's overcast about 95% of the year and it goes dark at literally midnight. How is this midnight? <laughs> I really want to try and get the classic banger sunset shot. Sunset day four attempt, pieces. The one that just all the light becomes golden and it's that classic landscape shot. So that's the plan. Those are the challenges. Let's get stuck in. The one thing this trip gave us in abundance was weather. All kinds of weather. Our first few days were moody joy. There was even this one moment when the clouds broke off the coast and we got this pool of ethereal light. I don't even know if the camera can pick this up, but that light is insane. I want the light to hit the spiky bits and then use this path as a leading yeah, line yeah. up. I've done that. That could be really cool. So when did you start photography? Since being quite young, really, sort of mid-teenage years. Every family holiday we went to, it was me that had the camera. So why specifically landscape photography? Because you hate people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> I love trying to sort of capture the vastness of it. Mm or a particular aspect of it that makes it different from anywhere else. One of the best things about the Faroe Islands is there are brilliant photo opportunities literally everywhere, even at the side of a road. The reflections here are amazing. The mist is so good and the water is so flat. I think this shows some natural beauty so, so well. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Next, we completed a short hike to the wonderfully named Lake Above the Ocean. I'm so glad that there were other people there for scale in these photographs because it really was ridiculously cool. Arctic, we get absolutely 
third time lucky with the waterfall. I think I got the best photographs yesterday when it was super duper moody and I got some long exposures. But I think today, now that it's not raining and it's not windy and it's awful, I got some awesome drone footage. Great location. Just took three times to get it right. So why did you want to come to the Faroe Islands originally? Because I saw it as a very, very scenic place, a very different place, more dramatic, and I've wanted to come here for quite a long time. But it just never happened for some reason. <laughs> then you had a child and I got in the way. <laughs> you have never got in the way of anything. No. <laughs> Look at him, he's just there, he's just chilling. We've enjoyed this spot so much, we've come back three times now. And this time we were concentrating on the puffins and getting a little bit of colour for golden hour. Now, while I do love the Lumix F4 to F5.6 pancake lens, it is an absolute beaut for the price. It is only £150 more budget lens. and probably not fast enough for the moodier conditions that we were dealing with. However, I have to say I really like some of these photographs and it really impressed me. Could I have done better with my longer, more professional lenses? Almost certainly. But I wanted to pack light for this holiday and I think it did a really good job. I was shooting the GH6 and a combination of a couple of lenses and my dad was shooting the Lumix G80. I think this was such a great combination because they're both weather sealed, they're both quite hardy cameras and we could pool our lenses together. I think I've got a shot of the puffins that I really, really like. It's very easy to predict where they're gonna land sometimes because they have very specific nests. And I managed to sort of hang over the edge quite precariously and get two puffins with the waterfall behind them, which is what I had in my head. It worked, I'm so happy. Do you think it's cool that we can be camera nerds together now? I think it's amazing. Yeah. And I think it's wonderful that you like what I like. But the thing is, I'm learning off you now because you know so much more than I do. <laughs> Mine was concentrated on landscape where you seem to be able to adapt your camera skills to anything. I'm nerd level one. I think you're up to 11. I'm up to 11. <laughs> <laughs> we are waiting for the rain to stop, by the way. <laughs> it's getting clearer. It is getting yeah, clearer. Yeah, you said that ten minutes ago. Oh, yeah, we did it. We got drenched. <laughs> <laughs> To say the weather is changeable here would be a vast understatement. We've had mist, fog, rain, wind. I got sunburnt the other day. We've got the whole range. I was talking to one of the locals at the hotel and they said that when they go out as a family, they basically have to pack a suitcase because they never know what the weather is going to be like. And they said they call it like Britney Spears, oops, I did it again, like the weather, oops. <laughs> You did it again. So even the locals can't predict what the hell's gonna happen here. So I've got no chance. And it's sort of interesting regarding the weather that in my mind, I was expecting all of these moody photographs for the photo book, which is what we got on the first day or three. And I love them. But then we had loads of sunshine and it's not like I'm gonna sit here and not take photographs. I think you can find beautiful compositions and beautiful scenes, even in the sunshine. And it might be very different to how I imagined it, but I still think some of the images are lovely. I think some of the things I've seen this week has just blown my tiny mind. I think particularly some of the scope of what you can see at the top of the mountains, like, like now. I mean, everywhere you look is just a beautiful, beautiful view. Even some of my phone photographs have turned out pretty good. So I think I've got more than enough for the photo book, but I really do want to nail one or two key images. We came here last night to see the sunset, but we were a little bit early because everything is going dark very, very late. So we thought we'd come back today. Now the weather is not quite on our side. Tomorrow is due to be a bit of a write-off in terms of rain. And I think the cloud coverage has come in a little bit sooner than we would have hoped. But I have faith, possibly delusion. I think we're gonna get a little bit of a good sunset 
when the sun drops beneath that angry cloud. I hope. Cross your fingers, because there's definitely no sunset and no good photographs tomorrow. And we're running out of days to get a banging sunset. My dad is on a mission up that mountain and I'm being really lazy down here. No, I think the cloud has won. I think the cloud has won. So things did not go to plan. However, I was still in a beautiful location with my dad and I got my butt up that hill and we had a beautiful time. <laughs> the next few days did not go to plan either. Sunset day four, attempt, pea soup. It's gonna happen before the end of the holiday. It's gonna be like a cinematic moment. And it's just gonna work, mm. but definitely not today. <laughs> and it was beginning to look like we would never get those sunset shots that we were after. But that did not stop us trying. Penultimate day update. We just did the very best boat speed boat ride ever. I think I got some of the moodiest, most interesting shots of the whole holiday going 40 miles an hour on this mental boat listening to dance music. <laughs> Look at that, another boat. However, we had a tragic, tragic accident. My dad's camera hit the handle when we were going over a back braking bounce Jolt. and his lens is no more. So that leads us to the sunset quest. Still yet to get one of those perfect classic sunsets. So at the moment, we're sort of hitting and wishing. We're driving around at 10 o'clock at night and stopping at every passing place. Oh, we're going into a tunnel. <laughs> we're stopping at every passing place and seeing what we can find because the lighting changes so dramatically all over the island. It's really hard to predict where it might be good. So we've got about an hour's left of trying for today. Let's see what we can get. We went through tunnel after tunnel on the hunt. <laughs> Where did that come from? And then finally, finally, at quite an inopportune moment when there wasn't really any iconic things around, the clouds gave way. Now it wasn't perfect. I wish I was up a mountain somewhere or at one of those Instagram worthy iconic spots. But sometimes life just isn't like that. I don't suppose this trip turned out how my dad imagined it so long ago. But maybe that's the whole point. Life doesn't go to plan and photography certainly doesn't go to plan. And maybe it's about finding beauty within the chaos of it all. Maybe the real sunsets are the memories we make along the way. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Emily for scale. It's so gorgeous. There is nothing quite like the feeling of seeing your own work, and in this case, also my dad's work, in print. This is so cool. All the prints look so nice. And the pages are so thick. Listen. So I designed this page because I had four interesting island photos and they were all portraits and all the lighting was so dramatically different on each. I just thought it would work really well as sort of warm, cool, warm, cool. There's no divide in the middle, so you can go through the middle with different variations of how the photos are. These two, I think, deserved a little bit of negative space around them because I just think they are some of my favourite images from the whole thing. First one being the speedboat one, it looks like something out of a fantasy novel. And this one also being from the speedboat where I found a massive waterfall randomly in the mist. We just sort of whizzed past it and I was like, ah, I'm trying to get a photo of it. It was great. After sort of the jam-packed nature of all the other pages, I really like that these two images get a space to breathe. 
Sal Digital offer everything that you could ask for in prints. We have photo books, we have wall art, we have the brushed metal wall art, which I had in a previous video. We even have acoustically treated canvas for studio environments, which I really need to invest in. If you are looking to print out something and get something the very best that it can be and something that will last and stand the test of time, then I think Sal Digital is a wonderful option. And they do support creators like myself to enable me to do crazy massive projects like this. So check them out in the description and thank you once again to Sal Digital for sponsoring this video.